When my parents got divorced, I'd moved to England at eight years old. So this is Tristan, Andy Pandy's brother. And my mother's sisters were in my ear. Your dad cheated on your mother. Your dad cheated on your mother. Part of the upbringing of the brothers was their father cheating on their mother, their mother divorcing their father, packing up from the United States with the kids and moving to England while their father remained in America. So I'm an eight year old kid. You see cheating on TV and in the soap operas that these women watch. And you know, you think it's, it's wrong. You think it's wrong. Well, that's an interesting choice of words. And I remember being about nine and saying to my dad, on a telephone call, Dad, you cheated on Mum. And I always had a lot of respect for my father. It was pointed out to me in a previous video that despite their mother doing her best as a single parent to raise her three children, which is the two brothers and a sister, in what they continue to describe as they grew up in poverty in Luton, England, the brothers still possessed much admiration and respect for their father, who cheated on their mother, was in and out of their lives, and by all accounts, never seemed to have any money to his name to be able to provide for his family. Which goes against the narrative that they constantly pitch that high value men with money are allowed to exercise their options with women. You can't expect them to be monogamous, but they will expect you to be monogamous to them. He said, Tristan, shut the fuck up because I'm not going to sit here and discuss male and female sexual relations with a fucking nine-year-old. So be quiet. Doesn't that sound like a man who knows how to take responsibility for his actions? When you're older, we'll discuss this. And what he talks about next could easily be described as a little boy seeking his father's approval. Cut to I'm now 16 years of age. I had a girlfriend named Rachel, but my first ever proper girlfriend. And I started cheating on Rachel with this girl called Liz. Like father, like son. I don't know, it was just in my blood. I never thought, well, let's be loyal to Rachel. It, it never registered to me. Is this the origin story of a sociopath? So my dad was visiting England at the time. I'd go over to brag to my father. And there it is, seeking his father's approval by behaving the way that he did. I said, hey dad, I've got this pretty girl named Liz and you know, I slept with her and Rachel doesn't know about it. He looks at me, blank face and says, you remember when you were fucking nine and you want to try to tell me? His father had no outrage that his son is behaving like him. He was only outraged at the nerve of the accusation by his son that he's done something wrong. Because for a brief moment, he took into consideration how the women in his family feel about it. It hit me at a very young age. So I think it was more of a role model thing. If young boys are looking to their fathers to guide them on what it means to be a good man. I wouldn't say it's genetic. <laughs> Certainly nurture more than nature, but it's just the way my dad was. What happens if the fathers potentially behave badly themselves? I knew that I wasn't going to live that way. Now, it stands to reason their father was a good role model in other areas to the boys. But that doesn't cancel out this. It seems their view and attitude of women has birthed in their formative years, observing their father's treatment of their mother. So the way we got rich is running these webcam studios, having these various pretty girls on, on webcam. Which rolls into how they use women as a vital asset in their business venture, which supposedly led them to becoming multi-millionaires. We decided to try to hire girls who we knew. Hiring women specifically in a professional business sense does not sound like that's what they did. Who we were dating and who we were sleeping with typically to work for us at our webcam studio. That's where the accusation of them using the lover boy method comes in. Now, while Andy Pandy has never openly admitted and stated he was using the lover boy method. What he's described he did sounds very much like it. How I met girls, how I got girls to like me, how I got girls to fall in love with me to work on webcam for me. She has to respect you and love you. You don't want a girl who's in it for money. You want a girl who's in it to be with you. That was my MO was find girls, make them love me and make them work for me. I have to fuck her so she obeys me. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me. So I can get what I actually want, which is not them. It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. I pitch girls, they say, hey baby, look, this is what I'm doing. You can make money this way. This is how much money it can generate. This is how much money I'm making. I think you should come and work together with me on this. A lot of them said no. I bet now they're glad they said no. I had one premises. All the girls had to be on premises at the same time. I just thought, you know what? There is no more sneaking around behind everyone's back because I'm trying to get rich now. Now I know that a girl can generate two, three, four thousand dollars a week. Or when there was lots of money to be made, that's when we were now upfront and honest about the situation of our relationship with our multiple girls. Friends. I need more women in this house. So there is no sneaking around. The game is up. It's time to just say to these women, look, you work for me. I'm sleeping with you. It is what it is. This is where we work. I know you thought you were my girlfriend. Now you're just an employee. This girl works for me too. I love you more than her. And you play them off against each other. Ah, some emotional manipulation. But that's what really developed my game in terms of having multiple girlfriends and having multiple women. Irrespective of their trial in Romania, irrespective of the legality of anything that they've done, morally it's abhorrent. Women will share a top tier dude. But he's clearly indicated and shown case he's been doing this type of behavior his entire life even before he made any money and apparently that makes him a top tier dude but it just seems like he has an overflowing amount of motivation and investment to pursue this playboy lifestyle i was top tier in every single way besides financially i guess at the time and again i reiterate the only two ways that you can do this is through financial incentive keep in mind his girlfriends are employed by him they are financially dependent on him for an income you play the game right
and emotional manipulation. I would occasionally and still do to this day have women who are be like, look, I know what you're doing, but I don't want to be included in this. Don't invite me to your stupid parties where you invite us all. Don't invite me to the clubs with the other girls who you sleep with. Just see me one on one and let me just live in my ignorant little world. That's a lot of them. Because it is difficult for me to comprehend a woman voluntarily choosing to get into a relationship with a man like this and not being financially incentivized or convinced that being in a relationship with him is better than being single. Uber is my best friend at this point. I guess we move from abhorrence to absolute absurdity. You know, you have two phones, you Uber one in as you Uber the other one out. You pull the switcheroo on yourself two or three times a day if you're just trying to spend time with every single girl. This sounds exhausting. I invited nine of my girlfriends, not girls who I'm sleeping with. I'm talking actual girlfriends. Well, it's good that you have a distinction. Who I am in, a real relationship with. I don't think that you actually know what a real relationship is. They're loyal to me, faithful to me. It seems like women are just your collectibles. Most don't work for me, some of them do. So he's got girlfriends that are employed by him and dependent on an income from him. Oh, they're choosing to be there. Yeah, but that line's very blurry. But I invited all my girlfriends to this one party. I lost one by pulling that stunt. Ugh, don't you hate when that happens? So I think that speaks to the psychology of women. It honestly just speaks to what your priorities are in life. And just listen to the way that he describes his girlfriends. Two of the girls who were at that party, I had taken their virginities. All of them besides one or two, very low body count. Like describing the mileage on a car. I'll go to the casino and gamble all my money away before I fucking hand it over. Some woman who's gonna be living in a house I paid for sucking some other man's dick, no way. And my women know that. Is that how he gets out of getting married? I can't marry all nine of you, that's illegal. The first time a woman fucks with you isn't gonna be the Me Too. Yeah, I do recall that the Me Too movement was mostly women just wanting to fuck with men. And the first time she fucks with you isn't gonna be that I'm gonna take all his shit. I think what's problematic is the preemptive belief and notion that any woman that wants to get into a relationship with you is only doing so because she's endlessly interested in just fucking with you. If you've never taken shit, but she shit tested you for two or three years and you finally have the kid, she knows Tristan Tate doesn't take shit. You wonder whether it's actual shit testing or it's one of his girlfriends airing her discrepancies and grievances to inviting the eight other girlfriends to her birthday party. I had to, um, and this is actually good, I, I wouldn't, I guess, admit this on a live. Oh, but he's going to. But I had to downgrade one of the mothers of my kids from the house she was living in. Well, isn't that fantastic? I needed her to understand that you do not fuck with me. Is it inappropriate and impolite to ask what she actually did? And she was living in a four bedroom rented house and I was paying the rent and all the bills, I pay everything. I said, okay, you know what? You want to fuck with me in that way? That's cool. You have 30 days to get out of that house. Here's your new apartment, two bedroom. Well, well what do you mean? Now your child doesn't have a garden to play in. Well, that's your fault. That is not my fault. Take her to the fucking park. Well, it's no wonder he tried to have this interview wiped from the internet. I don't take shit. So it's never going to get to that level. But the internet never forgets. Where they think, oh, well, let me call the US embassy. And because he's a citizen, maybe I can. Because they know, they know the consequence. It's not going to turn out good for them. Or me or anybody. Well, didn't that get sinister pretty quickly? You can't be a pussy and capitulate to every argument and every demand. And then when you have kids, think you're going to be some tough guy. And she's not going to fuck with you. Once again, irrespective of their upcoming trial in Romania, irrespective of the legality of how they operated their business ventures. I'm not suggesting that these women are participating in these relationships against their will. But it's important to keep in mind the brother's self-admitted MO to get these women to appear on webcam so they would make money for them was to get these women to fall in love with them. That it was important for their business that these women weren't in it for the money. That they were in it because they loved them. I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. That's what I wanted. So I was a pimp in that sense. My approach to women has always been how to get money from them. I'd have sex with women to get their money. I didn't want to have sex with them. I was trying to get the money. I don't even really want to fuck the girl. I want to know. She better love me afterwards. I need to get paid. I got rent. Fuck how do so I use these women to make money? That's this right. is a great so, business model. Because yeah. people always come at me and go, you're exploiting girls. I say, no, I'm not. I take a waitress yeah. who's making 10 bucks an hour. I give her a mansion to stay in. I give her a good dick and I give her a hundred bucks an hour. And then I get 200 bucks an hour for nothing. Win-win. Yeah. Everyone wins. There's no exploitation. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. These are meant to be the role models for young men. We can do so much better.